Today on Cruise Man's Garage, I'm going to show you how I'm going to replace this old style, old school Intermatic timer switch. It's a wall light switch that I use to control my front porch lights. And I'm going to replace it with some newer technology. The reason is I don't like the way you have, you have to set this timer to come on and off. It's very complicated. You have these little tiny buttons. I have to get a flashlight out because I can't see at my age. And it's got a weird set of sequences. I always have to get the instructions out, and the instructions are in two-point text. You know what I'm talking about. So every time I have to set this, like when the time changes or as the days get longer or shorter, um, it's just a pain in the butt to have to go through and relearn how to do it each time. I wanted something that I could set through Wi-Fi through an app on my phone or my iPad. And today on Cruise Man's Garage, I'm going to show you how I did that with the Neo Wi-Fi wall switch. Okay, so this is the Neo Wi-Fi wall switch, which is what we're going to install today. And this is the packaging that it comes in. I'm going to open this up and show you what comes inside before we do the installation. It's actually very nice packaging. As you can see, you've got a kind of an instruction manual that will give you some information on installation. Uh, if you've ex installed electronics before in your home, it'll probably be enough. Uh, hopefully this video will give you a little bit more information. And then it shows you how to set up your Wi-Fi. We'll talk about that later. This is the wall switch. And on the back, you'll notice there's four wires. <clears throat> and they are marked on the uh, back of the unit itself. You can see this is a ground. You have a neutral wire, which is mandatory uh, for installing this system. The ground is optional, but the, the uh, neutral wire is mandatory. You've got a live wire, and then you've got another power wire, and I'll talk about that. The, these can be installed to your black power cable in your wall, and they're interchangeable. It doesn't really matter which one goes where, uh, but they do both need to be installed, and we'll talk about that later as well. The face plate comes off, it just snaps in, in place. You can see there's a couple of little tabs here, so you can just basically pop it off for installation. Now, I'm not going to use this face plate because I have a dual switch uh, set up on my wall, so I won't be using their face plate. If you have a single switch, you could easily use this and it'd work fine. And this is basically the switch. Now, they do not provide mounting hardware for the switch. They do provide wire nuts, which are handy. I'll probably use a couple of these. And uh, let's get the switch installed. Before you begin installation, it's important to make sure the power is turned off to the switch at the breaker box. Now what I like to do is turn the switch on, check to make sure the lights are on. These are my porch lights in the ceiling. And then go trip the breaker until you find the breaker that turns those lights off. Do it one at a time. You can see here the lights are off. Now we can move forward. If you have multiple switches in the same switch box like I do, it might be a good idea to go ahead and loosen the switch next to the one you want to replace. I'm actually replacing the one on the right, but this will give me better access to the wires behind both switches. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uninstall or uh, unhook, un, you know, attach this old switch. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the ground wire. Basically, I'm just going to undo this wire nut. And as it turns out, I'll probably be able to use the same wire nuts uh, that were used in the old switch because they're certainly in good shape. Um, I'm going to disconnect the live wire, which on this switch is a blue wire. On the new switch, both the live and the power wires are black. So I'm going to disconnect that. 
and I'm going to disconnect the other power and now that switch is gone. This switch did not have a neutral wire so it did not require a neutral wire. However, there is a neutral wire back here in a, in a uh, wire nut and they're all white on my system. You need to check with your house wiring to make sure that your neutral wires are white wires. Uh, if not, you'll need to find out what color they are. On mine, they're white. Now one thing I'm going to do on the Anaku switch, I think that's how you pronounce it, is I'm going to uh, strip off some of this ground wire. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's, uh, it's really not long enough to fit around these ground wires. There's several ground wires wrapped together here, and I'm afraid it won't be long enough for the wire nut to get around. So I'm going to strip off a little bit of that. There's a little solder on the end of this wire. It makes it a little hard to get that insulation off. Okay, now I've got that stripped. So now I can easily wrap this around the ground, which I'm going to do that first. I always want to wrap this wire clockwise so that when you screw on the, the wire nut, it will go in the direction that you're threading on. You always want to pull on the wire. Make sure that it's in securely in that wire nut. Make sure it won't come out. Now we'll shove these wires back up in here once we get ready to install the switch. The next thing I'm going to install is this neutral wire. And I went ahead and unhooked this switch because I want to be able to get access to those neutral, that neutral wire. Now this is one of our power lines. And back here you'll see they're all white. All of these wires are white. That's our neutral. And that's what I'm going to connect my white wire to off the back of the switch. Remember, if your wire nut is not large enough, you can always use one of the wire nuts that comes with the uh, Neo switch. They are very large, so they're pl plenty to accommodate. I'm going to give that a good tug, make sure it doesn't come loose. And now we're going to attach the two black wires. And you'll notice there's also the other switch is also connected to this hot wire, so because they're all kind of connected together. I'm going to give it a good tug, make sure it's secure. Now, I'm ready to reinstall everything, but before I do, before I reinstall the switch, put the face plate back on, I want to check our connection first. So I'm going to go throw the breaker, put the breaker on, make sure that this switch works, make sure our lights come on, and then we'll know we have a good wiring setup here. Okay, you can see there is power to the switch because we've got a flashing light, so we are getting some power. Let's go check our front porch lights and see if they're on. Sure enough, we do have power. That's a good thing. Okay, so we got the switch connected correctly. I'm going to hit the switch again, see if it'll turn the lights off. Okay. Lights are off. That's good. So the switch works manually. Um, you're getting a flashing green light, and that's nothing to be concerned about. That just means we haven't set up the Wi-Fi yet. So once we get the Wi-Fi all set up on this switch, uh, we'll be good to go. So now let's go ahead and get this all pushed back up into the wall and get it. It is very important that you turn the breaker off again before you complete the installation of the switch. As you're pushing the wires back up into the wall switch box, you could electrocute yourself, so make sure the power is off. Okay, now we're ready to move all of our uh, wiring back up into this uh, switch box. It's very important that you turn the breaker off again out in the garage or wherever your breaker box is because you're going to be pushing these wires around. Uh, you don't want to accidentally come in contact with a bare wire, so I always turn the breaker off. You'll notice my switch is no longer has any lights on, so it's dead. And now we're going to push everything back. And these wires are kind of stiff, so they kind of they'll hold their shape once you push them back into place. 
And just make sure that nothing is pinched behind a screw or impeded so that you can uh, get your switch back in correctly. Now you'll notice these, these switches are, have a little bit of play left to right. There's kind of a slot. And that's so to make sure you can get your face plate to fit correctly. So you want to leave a little bit of play until you try the face, face plate to make sure it fits good. You also want to make sure you put this switch in right side up. Uh, you'll notice the little power switch there, the little line goes at the top. So make sure you get it oriented correctly, just so it looks a little nicer. Now I'm going to use two of the screws that came out of my old switch, because like I said, this does not come with its own screws. Kind of cheap, I think, on their part. And the heads of these screws are a little stripped out, so it takes me a little time to get them screwed in correctly. Okay, we're ready to install or reinstall the faceplate. And like I said before, because, this, because of this thick mounting plate, uh, it, it really doesn't fit perfect. But if you get it in as far as you can, it will still look okay. And that's probably one of my few complaints with the switch itself, other than the fact that they don't include uh, mounting screws into the switch box. You always want to try to get these screws to go up and down the heads of the screws so that, so that they're kind of uh, uniform throughout the whole switch, or switch plate, I should say. Okay, now you'll see, I don't know if you can tell, but it does stick out just a little bit over here. I'm going to come back in later, and I'm going to screw that Neo switch down a little bit tighter I was having a hard time because the Phillips head is a little stripped out and it's hard for me to get a good torque on it, but I may replace that screw. So you want to make sure you get this as flat as you can so that that wall plate will go flush with the wall. Now you can see I've turned the power back on out in the garage to my breakers and you'll see the flashing light. That tells me uh, we need to program this switch via the uh, Wi-Fi connection. I'm also going to Test the switch. You'll notice when you turn the lights on, you'll see a small orange light. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but there's a little red light or orange light right underneath the flashing green light. So let's go get this connected to Wi-Fi. I'll show you how we do that. So I've already installed this Neo app on my Android phone. You can download this from the Play Store or you can download it from the uh, App Store if you're on an iPhone. Unfortunately, they don't make an app for a Macintosh or for a PC. So you have to either have an iPhone, iPad, Android phone, something of that nature. Now, when you first launch the app, I've already installed one device on my app. So I've already connected it to my Wi-Fi network. The first time you open it, it will ask you to connect to your Wi-Fi, your local Wi-Fi network, and you'll have to know your password to do that. So I'm going to launch the app. And hopefully it will go out and it will find these devices. Now you can see we have the office porch light. That is the switch that I installed previously. Down below there's Neo switch. That's the brand new one we just installed. I haven't given it a name yet. And you'll notice it has a green icon. That indicates that the light is currently turned on. The gray icon indicates that my office porch light is turned off. Now, you can use the app to manually turn these lights on or off, which is actually pretty cool. So if I want to turn that light off that we just installed, I just tap the power button and it goes off. Now, if I want to modify some settings for this particular switch, I just tap on the switch here, and now I can do several things. I can rename the switch, 
which is kind of handy because, you know, I don't know what Neo switch is. I, but if I say front porch light, I'll know what it is. And you can also identify an icon. In this case, it's a light. Um, if it were a, another appliance, then you could uh, select a different icon, obviously. So I'm going to give this a name. And I'm going to call this front porch. And click OK. I'm not a big fan. They use a light green text. It's very hard to read. So you have to kind of look for it. Now, you can also do several other things. You can set a countdown timer to have the light come on, for example, three hours from now. Or you can set an anti-theft timer, which would basically turn the lights on and off at various schedules throughout the day between two different time periods. You can read the Neo manual. It'll explain all this. I actually like to use a schedule. And the reason I use the schedule is because if we're out of town, or even if we're home, I like to have the lights come on at a certain time each day and go off at a certain time each morning. So I'm going to set this particular switch up to come on at 7 o'clock at night. And you just basically scroll these little icons here. That's when I want it to come off. And I want it to go, I'm sorry, that's when I want it to come on. And then I want it to go off at, I'm going to say, 7 o'clock in the morning. I can change these, of course, at any time. And here's my repeat days. It's just going to repeat Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Every day, I want that to come on and off at the same time. And I hit OK, and now it's set. And that's really all there is to it. It's actually pretty cool the way that works. What I don't really care for about this is that what I'm not crazy about is if I set an anti-theft timer, it will override it will override my schedule. The anti-theft timer is good if you're leaving town and you want your lights to come on and off at various times randomly during certain periods of the day to make it look as though somebody's home. It's actually a pretty nice feature. So once I've set my schedule, I can just go back, and now you can see there's both of my switches, my office porch and my front porch. And so now, wherever I am, I can turn these on or off as long as I have a Wi-Fi connection. This app does not work through your phone line. You have to be on Wi-Fi to make it work. One thing you want to be aware of is if your home loses power while you're out of town or while you're gone, the schedule will not work. And the reason is because the schedule is actually stored on an iCloud server somewhere or a cloud server. It's not stored in the memory of the switch itself. I kind of wish it was. That would be a little more reliable, a little better. So if you lose power or if you lose your Wi-Fi connection or if your Internet service goes down, your lights aren't going to come off, come on and go off uh, like you expect because they rely on that Wi-Fi signal. Consequently, the same is true if you want to turn your lights on or off remotely. If you don't have Wi-Fi access in your home or you don't have power to your router or your Wi-Fi server, you're not going to be able to turn your lights on or off. So that's a little bit of a downside to this. But overall, as long as you have reliable Internet and as long as you have power, to your house, it's a, it's a really great system, I think, and, and certainly better than what I had before because that thing I replaced was so hard to set. This is very easy to set through the app.